Okay. I just want to hear the topic. Just go on ahead and do what you're going to do. Because I can hear it out here. Oh, I can hear it out here. Don't let you know when you're ready. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay. I'm ready. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Lord, we just come to thank you for being God, for you are God Almighty. Father, you are a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, Father, and we just bless you each and every day. We thank you for continuing to be in our life and wanting to be in our life, Father God. Lord, you are awesome. And Father, Lord, we just come to you right now with humbled hearts, Father God, knowing that you are God, trusting in you, Father God, relinquishing ourselves, oh God, yes. our fears, our anything father god we just we just take it and we give it to you father god and we stand in the confidence that you are god and that your word is your word father and there's nothing else that's like it father we just thank you we trust you we believe upon you oh god in the mighty name of jesus amen amen amen, amen. amen. thank you jesus okay now the scripture that we're going to be talking about today it comes from proverbs proverbs uh, it is written by three different people. It's listed that it's written by. Written by, excuse me. It's written by Agur, which is said to have compiled the collections of Proverbs 30. It's also written by. If you look in Proverbs 31, it says that it is also written by King uh, Lemuel. But um, in doing the research of that, it says that King Lemuel is a king that is only listed in the Bible during that time frame. And so it is speculated that because he's only in there that one time, the question then is asked is in fact is if he is actually Sol if he is actually King Solomon just using like a, a different name or a suit as a pseudonym of a different name in his writing. And so that's in Proverbs thirty one. The but the majority of Proverbs is written by King Solomon. Um if you read 1 Kings 3, 1 through 15, um, you'll learn to understand why you always hear that Solomon was the wisest man. Because he was. Uh, God came to him and said, what do you want? And of all the things that he could have asked for, he said that he wanted, um, he wanted wisdom. He wanted to be able to serve as king because he knew he was a young king. Yeah. He knew that he was young and he did not have all the answers. And he wanted to be able to serve his people as an effective king. And because of that, he, he asked for wisdom. And God said, hmm, because you asked me for that. You could have asked me for anything else in the world. You could have asked me to be the wealthiest man in the world. You could have asked me to kill your enemy. You could have asked me for anything. But because you ask not just of yourself, but because you ask to help someone else, I'm a grant it to you. Mm -hmm. And so as we continue to look at the significance of Solomon's wisdom to Proverbs is the fact that the book is based, the book of Proverbs is based on wisdom. Yeah, it, te good. it teaches us how to live godly lives. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs, Solomon shared with us as much of his wisdom as he could as he could it says that in proverbs um it was written in the earlier reigns of his life mm -hmm. and so as much as he could say he had all this wisdom you can tell that god gave him enough wisdom to share it and he wanted to share that wisdom with us mm -hmm. um in proverbs it is broken up for three types of people it's broken up for young people it's broken up for all people and then the wisdom and teaching is broken up also for leaders and chapter 11 is what we're going to look at. If you look at chapter 11, this chapter is based on the teaching to all people. We're in Proverbs 11, 1 and 2. And what the scripture says, it says that dishonest scales are an, abomin are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. When pride comes, then comes shame, but with the humble is wisdom. And so the title of the lesson is God's show and tell. Because God, and to me in these scriptures, God is showing us what it is that we are doing. And then he is telling us how to make him happy and how to get it right. Okay. And so my first point is to be honest. 
It says, this honest scales are an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his, is his delight. And so I really looked into that word. The word that stuck out to me was abomination. You hear it all the time. So it was like, hmm, what does abomination really mean? And so as I began, as I began to look and search for it, according to uh, Matthew 24, 15 and 16 and Daniel 12 and 11, it, it, it describes to me abomination as to mock or deny the reality of God's presence. And so if you think about that, it says dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. Back in those times when people used to go to the market, they used to get cheated in what they get or what they paid for mm -hmm. because people would put those weights on those scales and, just, and be dishonest. Mm -hmm. And so if you think about it, dishonest scales are an abomination to the Lord. You are saying that God's presence is not with you when you are being dishonest. Mm -hmm. You are saying that, oh, because nobody has seen you do it, you think that it's okay. But it is telling us that that's an abomination. We are denying God. If we sit there and we're sitting in the room by ourselves and we're doing something that we know we good, we got good, we have no good reason to do, that God doesn't want to do it, and we're like, oh, nobody's going to know, guess what? God knows. Mm -hmm. God is watching us. Mm -hmm. God knows each and everything that we do. Yeah. He's seeing it all. And it's like, oh, it's okay. I'm just going to do it. It's not okay. Mm -mm. It is not okay because you are denying the existence of Christ. And so God is telling us that we are to be honest and that, but it says, but a just weight is his delight. So he's showing us what we shouldn't do. And then he's telling us how we can get it right. Be just. Do things that are, do things that are according to God's word. Mm-hmm. Don't go in our own spectrum and think that's what we're supposed to do because that's not what God has called us to do. Amen. The other part, the second point that I have is to be humble. In 11.2, it says, when pride comes, then comes shame. Now, a lot of times you hear that uh, pride cometh before a fall. Mm -hmm. And so you think you're just going to fall. But here it's telling us that you're going to be shamed. Mm -hmm. That when you are prideful, which is pride is the exaltation of oneself. Mm -hmm. So you are exalting yourself. And it's not just like, oh, yeah, I think I'm better than you. When you are prideful, you feel that you are above God. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's why you have the problem. It's not just man that you're above. It's a God mm -hmm. that you feel that you are above. You feel that, oh, I did this. Mm -hmm. I got this car. Mm -hmm. I taught this lesson. Mm -hmm. I got this house. I got that position at the job. You did not do it. And when you start to have that prideful exaltation of yourself that you run in this world by yourself and this is what you do and it's all on you, mm -hmm. you're going to fall. You're going to be shamed. Everything's going to be snatched from you. And here's the shame though. Everything's going to be snatched from you and you're going to be standing there looking like, and people are like, where's your car? Because now you're walking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now you on the That's bus. Good. Very Where's good. Where's your house? Very now you're living in an apartment with just no bedrooms, just an efficiency. Mm -hmm. That's Very your shame. Because good. if you did it by yourself, All then right. you should still have it. All right. The fact that God said, oh, you did it here, let me show you. Then you're going to snatch it from you. All right. And Very so good. That, is where your, that is where your shame comes in. Yeah. Trust in God. Know that God is God and give it to him. God tells us then, but with the humble is wisdom. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Humble yourself down and know that God is God. Know that God gave it to you because wisdom tells you to put God first. Amen. You use wisdom when you say, God, I exalt you. God, I honor you. God, I thank you for the ability to be right here where I'm standing today. That's right. Glory to God. Boy, look at here. Well, you know, when you're trying not to shout because you're just that excited, that's why I am right now. I'm, I'm thankful, but you have to be humble unto God to Amen. know that God has given it to you. Amen. To know that even a place that you didn't think that you would be in your life, God is God has given it to you. Amen. God. All but God. All but God. Amen. So God is showing us to not be a cheat. He's showing us to not to not be prideful. And he's telling us how to be honest. And he's telling us um how to, how to be humble and acquire wisdom all at the same time. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen.
Got show and tell. And your first um, point was be honest. Is be that honest. Right? Yes, ma'am. And then your second point was be humble. Yes, ma'am. Okay, that was really good. Your scriptures were good as far as um, references. You're bringing us in. There were a few scriptures that you said that were very key scriptures and they were really good. It would have been nice to have had those passages. Okay. Because I know that that came from your overflow though. And What's that's that? okay. Your overflow being that's something that was already on the inside of you. Although you may have studied and what have you, that came out through your teaching. It was already there. Does that make sense to you? Okay, say so, um, though when you talked about um, um, pride comes before the fall. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you had oh, that yeah, passage. I got you. I didn't write, no, I didn't. I just, yeah. right. I came from you. out of your spirit. I understand. Exactly. I and understand. sometimes that happens. You know, so yeah. under those circumstances, you may not always be able to call yeah. which one it is, but that's okay. okay. You were able to use it and you made the connection. Okay. Um, it was and, one more I forgot, but it's okay. What were you going to say? I said it was one more I forgot. I'm thinking to myself out loud. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. That time because okay. sometimes though, when you start teaching, one thing, and this is for everyone, when you teach, when you study and prepare for your lesson, you're not going to always say everything that you plan to say. Right. Okay. And that's okay because sometimes the Spirit of God will give you that part for you. It's for yourself. It's for a future reference. It may be for Amen. another time. Amen. So Amen. when you're Amen. getting ready to deliver the Word of God and the Word of God is speaking to mm -hmm. His people, if you're not saying those things that you studied, then it's nine times out of ten mm -hmm. it's because it was meant for you and God knows who's in the audience. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you got to know about His Word. Mm -hmm. God knows who is in the audience. Mm -hmm. He knows what His people need. So you can study, you can prepare, prepare, you can do all that you do. But if you surrender yourself to your heavenly father he will speak through you mm -hmm. and meet every need that the people have that are sitting amongst you you may say oh man i didn't say this mm -hmm. oh i forgot to do this or oh, i wish i would have mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. yeah you know mm -hmm. man it would have been good if i would have said x y and z god don't make no mistakes mm -hmm. if you put in the true time all you're supposed to do then is surrender and allow the Spirit of God to do the rest. And see, this is the thing about the Word, the word of God. God don't need no help. Mm -mm. Do you hear me? For himself. Mm -hmm. God don't need you to work His scriptures and like His Word speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. If you would just submit yourself to the Word. Now, something that you were talking about as far as pride is concerned. Sometimes we get the Word of God and we try to make it we try to do something with it. We don't have to do that with the Word of God. The Word of God does its own thing. Mm -hmm. All He wants us to do is take the time in it and just let it and let it marinate. And then He'll show how to pull those things out. Your topic was excellent. Mm -hmm. Your your points they were excellent. You did a good job. I can tell that you were nervous in the beginning, yeah. but you know what happened. And it has sometimes it makes a difference what happened before you came up. Mm -hmm. So you had to kind of warm up. I knew it was in you. It was no doubt about it. You had to kind of warm up. Mm -hmm. And then about a, about a quarter of a way into your lesson, that's when you was like, I'm in now. Mm -hmm. I'm in the driver's seat. <laughs> it's on and popping. And can't nobody stop me. Sure. It's on. Yeah. And you'll see, when you get a chance to go back and look at this, you're going to see a shift. You'll see it, a transformation happen. It's like, okay, I'm trying to work this out, trying to work this out. And then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God took mm -hmm. over. Yeah. That's when you it's humbled true. yourself and the Spirit of God began to operate through you. And you let him do what he knew how to do. He pulled those words out of you and then you just became a vessel at that point. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. Great job. Yeah, awesome. Great job. Great job. <laughs> let me tell you something, girl. I'm sorry, Pastor. You can preach. Amen. You can preach. Good. Don't let that go to your head. I, I would say that the uh, history was long. Yeah, that was the other It was long. About that. Yeah. But okay. when you got to the part when you said you feel like shouting, I just knew you was going to move it to, but the lowliest wisdom, I just knew you was just going to preach that all night long. Because <laughs> <laughs> you was there. You was right there, you right? Was, there. I thought she was going over. Well, but I was she like, look at her. She's going to get happy. <laughs> I was. I was. I was like, folks on time. Folks on time. You know, skirt and just. <laughs> 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 but it was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it 
when you put the time in, man, 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 God don't have no problem mm-hmm. bringing it out. Mm-hmm. He don't. He he does it in a way that is your way, and your way is different than Shauna's. It's different than Amelia's. It's different than me. Than Ms. Yep. It's totally different, yep. but it's yours. Yep. And that's what I want people to understand is that when God begins to use you, just let him use you. Yep. Your teaching is different than anybody you ever know. But if you don't listen to it and keep improving on it, you, you wouldn't know what you really have. But since Joanna's up there recording, man, some good stuff. Yeah. Can I have a question? Yeah. Yep. So the question that I have is how do you know when you, I mean, not how do you know, do you ever truly feel prepared? No. So that's normal to keep going back and keep looking at it, even mm-hmm. if you already done oh, it. Oh, I don't that's do that. Been, that's been, um, I don't do that. You don't do that. I, I do it, but I stop. Okay. Because you won't want to be over prepared. Yeah. Okay. Right. I, 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 it took me a long time to get to that get point. Though. Okay. Yeah, it took me a long time. But, you know, now, but now that I have it, I just like, on it. do it. Like, for instance, I teach Sunday school this Sunday. I'm done. I'll preach here. I'm done. I'll go preach somewhere else. I'm done. I'll be teaching over here. It's constantly always going. Mm -hmm. And God give you one sermon at a time. He never give you three to preach at a time. He give you one. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure you're focused only on the one. I have to. I want to preach sometimes when I'm teaching Sunday school, but I can't because that's a teaching teaching lesson. It is. So I have to understand that as a teacher, my job is to teach and to get people understanding about who God is. Now, if we all shout together, we can all shout together. <laughs> but yeah, it is different. Though. Yeah. Guys, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, First Lady, when you were talking and you were talking about um, about we might not be able to say everything that we wanted to say, but um, nine times out of ten, it was for you. Like, I thought I was going to fall on the floor and cry. <laughs> like, I did. And like, seriously, I'm going to fight back tears now. But no, that's exactly what happened to me last time. I was so mad and Joanna tell you, I was so much that I wanted to say, but I didn't say, and I was trying to be conscious of time. But I was, I was mad when I left. I wasn't satisfied with myself and what I didn't get to. And I promise you, the Holy Spirit said that was for you. Wow. And I, I, I know it. And I was like, when you said that, it was just confirmation that, you know, I ain't crazy. And that was for me. Amen. <laughs> and, oh, that's Amen. good stuff. Next Amen. time, if you don't get it out, get it all out. Make sure you get everything out. If you know God talking to you, mm-hmm. let him talk. Yeah. You get that people preaching. When God get to talking, they telling everything. <laughs> but it's supposed to be if God wanted to be said. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes we have to be quiet because he tells us to. It's weird how he does it. I don't know how you yeah, do it with everybody. You just have to be listening as he's mm-hmm. talking to you when you're doing it. Mm-hmm. So that's how he works. Amen. Any questions? Mm-hmm. I, I just kind of wanted to say one more thing to what um, Shaquana had asked about. It, do you ever feel like you're like you prepared? studied enough, or like you prepared? You might feel prepared enough. And kind of going back to what Pastor said, being that it's new but not new it, in the position and what you're preparing for and what you're doing. Sometimes it's um, our personality. It is. That I understand. You, I, I am. You already know where I'm I going. I am, and it is true. That is what it is. Okay. I understand, because okay. I do that okay. in my lessons and everything. I have to look at it a hundred times before I feel that it's exactly where it's, it, well, I good. understand. And that's, that's okay. That's good. Okay. And, it's, okay. and you know what? The good thing about that is you're reversing God's word. Right. That's... Right. But even in referencing God's word, there is a proper balance. Right. And so you have to, at some point, say, Spirit of God, I know that I've done what is required of me. Now I need to sit and rest in what I've, I've done the work. Good. Now I have to just sit and rest in what Amen. you are going to do through me. That's, that, and you have to do that, that across the board. I understand that. That That is so true That's when so you're dealing with that. married people and with kids. Yeah. You must do that. Because if I just try to stay in this book, somebody ain't going to get fed. Somebody ain't going to get, you Balance. know, 
They ain't going to get nothing because I'm all trying to give myself to God. But I forgot I'm married. Right. So if I'm married, I got to give my husband his time. got to give my kids their time. I got to make sure they clean up. You know, all this stuff. Because when you're married, you're not, you're not, you are God's. But it's not like you're single. Right. Mm -hmm. it, it's you a know. ministry within itself. Mm -hmm. right. There it is. And since it's God loves marriage, He really do. He wants us to learn how to balance what He's doing with us. I say, okay, now shift over. Go ahead and make dinner. Go ahead and clean it up. And then, before you lay down again at night, look at it again. Mm -hmm. and just, back to the yeah, yeah, it's a fine balance. It is. It's a great balance. We just have to learn how to use it. And sometimes that takes time. Right, it, it takes time. With, it with everything, yeah, you just have to. Yeah, don't right. beat yourself up about that. Right. Do not do that to yourself. Oh man, I, I need to come to y'all with this. Y'all gonna be bad. I'm telling you, looking at my team, they just do Oh yeah. I heard yeah. what you just said. <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Yeah. Hear what? Any other questions? <laughs> Did y'all hear that? All right, let's give her a hand. Hey.